Department School of Laws campus, uh, which we are going to go in future, and the other campus as well. Now, to start with the things, I would request Professor Devi to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, thank you, Raj. And we welcome to you all again, formally this time, rather than informally last night. Um, this is always a very um, formalized introduction to what is an intense experience for the two weeks. Uh, and I find myself each year saying something similar, therefore similar to my ears and to you, but not to yours. And it is to remind myself and to tell you just how extraordinary this uh, program is. We feel that we've grown in our now nine years, eight years here, but nine years in total. We missed one because of the earthquake. We've grown alongside the development of KSL. So when Ben Saul and I first met Uberaj 12 years ago, he was just really setting up at the beginning stages of KSL. And now this extraordinary law school with the extraordinary students that it's produced, and you've got four of them amongst you, and they truly are extraordinary, um, has developed into the main legal center and institution in this country. Uh, and this country is right at the beginning of this sort of development explosion. You are, good, you are witnessing it. And there's absolutely no doubt that the men and women that are coming out of KSL are going to be the leaders of this country and to develop it the way uh, it deserves. Uh, and a lot of that, Really, a lot of that goes down to Uberaj's vision and leadership. I will admit that when I first met Uberaj, I thought this is all starry-eyed stuff, what he wants to do with his law school, and indeed what he wanted to do with this course. But through sheer force of personality, um, which you're going to witness now and for the next two weeks, he's managed to do this. He's managed to create this law school, and with Ben and myself and all our helpers, including this year at uh, we've been able to put this program together and therefore become part of the KSL story. Uh, what I think is most extraordinary about this course and about the experience that you're going to have uh, is came straight from those conversations that Ben and I had with Hugh Barash, and that was not to make it a classroom-based um, affair. I don't believe that there's any value in taking you out of your Sydney classroom and putting you into a Nepalese classroom. I don't see a great deal of difference uh, in doing that. Of course you're going to be spending time inside classrooms, but you're going to be lectured by people other than Sydney University professors. But you're going to spend a lot of time out there, just during the day, while you're negotiating traffic, while you're buying Kit Kats, or whatever it is you're, you're doing, you're going to be seeing the Nepalese and the Nepalese culture. But of course in the site visits themselves, which I, as I said last night, and I want to emphasize again, are really extraordinarily valuable. Uh, they take a lot of organization. Uh, we are encroaching on these organizations' normal daily affairs. Um, if it's an NGO, uh, they're helping traffic women or, house, or homeless people, of which there are many in this country. We're not really top of their list, are they? are we? But yet, they will open themselves to us. They see value in displaying to us what it is they do, in the hope that we take away those lessons and do something with them, however indirect that is. And I would like to think that over the last, the last nine years, uh, your forebears and you yourselves do do things with the lessons that you learn while you're here. So, like I said last night, I want to encourage you to to grasp this opportunity with both hands. Uh, it'll be over in a flash. Um, sleep as little as possible. Uh, grab it, really imbibe everything that you can. Um, make those notes in those reflective diaries. That will be the thing that you can take away from, you, from this rather than just simply the academic lessons. Um, but to above all, uh, enjoy yourselves. Um, so once again, I want to thank you for being so enthusiastic in joining up to this course, but most of all to thank uh, KSL, the head of the helm, Ravi, and all the helpers, 
uh, for putting together this program, and uh, I look forward to being part of it yet again. So thank you very much, Ravi. Thank you, very much. Thank you Dan and David, for the uh, uh, program which is so unique that, that I think people have asked David as well for, for, for how, how do you run this program, what's, what's being done about this, and, and can, you, can you see the model of it. And even KS has been approached by the university to work together. But then the trust and the, the commitment between the two partners and also the professors is so unique that uh, we have stuck together with each other and we believe our partnership has a long way to go. Uh, with these words, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Yuvraj Sangrola. He's the Executive Director for the Kathmandu School of Law. Also, he's the former Attorney General of the country. Um, I think when you hear him, you will get to know more about him. Thank you. Ongoing activity known as uh, Himalayan Trade School over the last uh, nine years. Uh, almost 12 or 13 years before when we met here in Kathmandu doing a small project between uh, Kathmandu School of Law and Sydney University Law Faculty. We produced a couple of very good documents that time and uh, somehow uh, consider it very important to have a kind of tuning of students from a very economically developed society and economically developing society. We wanted to uh, keep them together and make students uh, from developed society to really observe the lifestyle and the situation. The general people uh, face every day. Uh, that was uh, brought true after a couple of years. And this is eight years. We just suspended a program in 2015 at the Speakers of Denver, Autopec, as we were not able to manage those uh, uh, things that time. Why did we do it? Uh, one of the fundamental objectives behind is to let the students from Shoshani uh, like Australia, you can say America and UK, understand the the efforts uh, placed by people for making their life better. So we therefore believe that uh, the era of Austinian definition of law is born. It should be law, legal education should be very much linked to the need of the people. And therefore, law should serve the development. It was the basic idea that we thought about and we Therefore, design the program not to do in a classroom like this, but to go to field, talk to people, discuss the issues, and then try to find out what might be the right way for this problem to be properly addressed. And also to know like what are these base things that society should preserve and society should change. Most developed society think that uh, Everything in the developing society needs to be changed and they should be like uh, Australian and uh, uh, European. No, I don't believe in that. There are certain unique, very typical and very specific uh, specs of life which is uh, benigned and needs to be protected rather than dust bound. But there are so many other things that we can see it from west to east and east to west. I often talk about uh, what makes me work 18 hours a day. And simple answer is like my joint family. I live in joint family. So there are a lot of people to look after me. And I also look after them. So it's a cooperation in the family. Okay? I often share jokingly with my colleagues, especially with politicians. Why do you need much money? Because I cannot use, I cannot spend my money because my wife owns and myself. So there's such a bunch of big money in my room that I cannot spend. Because I need not go to eat food often to this kind of hotels because there are people who alternatively cook food in the home. And every day we can get a good food. 
So I try to understand what is a life if I spend alone and it's stable. Okay? I should cook my food every day. I should do all activities. So this is this is something a culture that we should preserve. This should not be destroyed. It doesn't mean that you should force people to live together in a family, but if the collaboration or the cooperation of being together is preserved, I think it's better. So therefore, this is not a culture to be destroyed. This is to be preserved. But then, there are a lot of individual ideas. There are a lot of individual life which needs to be uh, promoted and we should go on from the Western Hemisphere. So these are the things that we thought about. So, we, 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 we thought that time that you should teach the people, but you should also learn from the people. You should see the projects, and you should identify what are the weaknesses this project is having. And what better could be done? Or if it is a very good project, then some of you probably write article and say that this is a beautiful project. It protects environment, it protects people, for example, in most of the hydroelectricity projects in Nepal over the last five years, a policy has been adopted that if this project is produced in that particular place, so around 30% of the, the stock, the share should be given to the villages. So villages are not making money out of it. So they are uh, also uh, benefiting from the big project. So with this policy, people are quite happy to give their lanes to the project uh, uh, project uh, in my time, so that project would not be disturbed. And there is also kind of a, a, a policy of the government over the last some years that uh, those works which these people can do in that particular area should be given priority to them. So this project, these projects have been uh, bringing a lot of money. After six, uh, before six years, even you can say before three years, we had no study. Terrible load study. Up before six years, you can imagine we had 16 hours of city. So there was a, a joke like when we had electricity, then we used to do, hey God, something like that. So we have electricity, but now there is no road city. Why? So many projects. That means many more projects means creating more works to the people down there. So it's probably because of that over the last four years Nepal is making almost 7, 7.5 or 6.5 uh, percent of economic growth, and now within a very short period of time, what we see is like a big transition. It's very painful sometimes when development in the positive states take place. It creates more problems to the people. The roads are stopped because they are making bigger. City is dusty because they are making more works. Everywhere construction, so sometimes it is very very painful. So sometimes I feel that it's better to go back to the. Uh, the era of those times where there was no telephone, no road, nothing. I mean, it's better to live. But then when you have something good, you should also suffer. So economically, we are doing better. So this is bringing a lot of social problem also. Migration has become very intensified. Uh, I just start uh, doing a small research. Ten years before, only 465 divorce cases all across the country. So over 5,000 divorce cases in Kathmandu alone now. So this is a pitfall of development. But we cannot stop development. So that, that speaks up uh, migration, that speaks up consciousness, that speaks up empowerment of the women, all because of some many other, uh, many, many other factors. Well, simply cannot go back because of this social problem. But we are therefore training our students to Learn how can we properly address this kind of thing. So development not only brings a big house, big road, good telephone, and good technology, but it also has uh, impacts on society, so social and economical problems. So life has become much more challenging now because it's uh, price-wise goes up uh, and uh, more consumption. Uh, driven economy that we have facing a terrible uh, trade deficit because uh, because people want to enjoy the same facilities technologically and all of that uh, people in the United States do. So, Nepalese students also are very happy, but they are lucky. 
They are, I mean, not very much uh, unlucky like you because parents do not give you much in Australia. But these girls, you can have them, they have 60,000 uh, worthy telephone and that's not processed by them. It's their parents' way. So anytime they can say that, okay, we have a scooty, the parents will buy, okay? If they went to Australia, they will buy the tickets, so they will not do. So what they will do? They sleep until 9 o'clock. So this is another uh, uh, bad aspect of the joint family, and uh, parents are in, children not working. So they are dismantling now. So for many students, that's not possible now. They should work better. So with this kind of thing, what we wanted you to do is like to take part in this kind of activity. In this kind of uh, orchid so that you will know. So I often say that Nepal is a laboratory for the research because Australia has exhausted issues to do research. Now you can do research on what makes bush fire, but I think uh, that's not more for the law students rather than uh, law students somebody else. But here, every every aspect you have an issue for research. Okay, this is what. So over the last nine years, we have seen this program is one of the signature program. Kathmandu School of Law is going away, another university. So it's impacting our students also. They learn and discuss. We have three very basic, important programs Kathmandu School of Law Dodge with uh, other universities. We do a 21 days residential program. We just finished it a uh, couple of weeks before, where students from China, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, uh, the last couple of years also from Africa. And it is an intensive, very, very intensive. We call it residential, regimental uh, uh, school. So you have no, no choice but to do work and study. And uh, this transforms the students a lot. We do have uh, in July another very important program that's called Taekwondo Dialogue. So this is more dedicated to international law and international relations. So we invite students from different countries. And we do try to focus on uh, the Asian uh, discourse on international relations. We definitely criticize a lot of Donald Trump and all that. Uh, but that should be kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, thing that we have to do. We should also understand what we are doing and what they are doing. And it's not a time for they and us, but it is rather something to do together. So bring the world together. Uh, and uh, start thinking more as a rational, globalized society. That's what we believe in. And this is the program. In the past, David and I used to go always together, but there are a lot of works now, so I always uh, not be uh, going, but uh, I will be accompanying in most important events. At least I will go to Etora with you. Uh, when we will show you the biggest, uh, biggest dam, very highest dam, uh, to produce electricity and this is a third category of uh, project now because many more bigger projects have come and three biggest projects are going to uh, complete uh, probably in another 10 years from now and that's going to uh, earn a lot of proceeds from Nepal. So uh, electricity has been one of the most important, most important supplies to other countries probably. So we have started selling electricity to India, already not in a big volume, but in a small volume now. So India has already been given a big river in the eastern part of Nepal, where it produces uh, almost 20% adequate for India, should they have started constructing it. So we have given another big project to China in the eastern part of Nepal also. So it's going to be the biggest one, and also multi-purpose projects Make, creating a dam and then uh, making it huge by irrigation in several parts of the eastern part of the country. And one biggest another project in the western part of Nepal that we have just uh, negotiating with Bangladesh and Bangladesh will produce the electricity and take it from here. So with these products, projects and money, so you can tell us like uh, what will be uh, the society when we become like you, what kind of problem that we have to face. So you can tell us very much. We can tell you what are the problems that we face when living in an uh, understate, very poor kind of situation. Uh, so these are the exchanges that we want to make with you. A couple of very important programs. We will go to Parliament of Nepal. So they have officially invited us and we will discuss um, a 
very important issue like the conflict of interest uh, for the lawmakers. They are business people and they are also members in the parliament. So how do they make good law, the rational law? So that's a discussion. So the speaker of the uh, uh, National Assembly will be with us and a lot of parliament members will be with us. We will discuss. We will go to all the projects also and most importantly you will go to the outreach campus of Kathmandu School of Law. Kathmandu School of Law is not very far from here. It's just 15 minutes right from here. It's not a big campus here because uh, uh, we already have been surrounded by a big number of houses. So we already got lost over there. So there is on the top of the mountain, there is an outreach campus. We have accommodation almost for 80 people. Uh, we have a cafeteria down there. And uh, we have not, I don't guarantee you that you will get hot water every day. Uh, it depends on the sun. But if there is a clear sunny day, then you will get hot water, otherwise we will put you in the cold water. <laughs> okay? And we want you to enjoy there. You can see the range of Himalayan mountain over there. Uh, we have a better conference room there. And we have uh, not very good, but uh, affordable and accommodate, uh, accommodatable kind of uh, uh, rooms over there. Okay? A lot of fruits, but none of them right now. If you had been 15 days before, you could enjoy oranges and tangerines and avocado, but not now. We exhausted them. Uh, we finished them. <laughs> uh, so you may probably feel very uh, uh, happy over there. You have internet and everything is there, but we are in the middle of it. So this is what uh, uh, almost 10 years before when I these two gentlemen professors from Sydney University, I took over there and I said that uh, Outreach Campus is going to be constructed here. They didn't believe. This, they thought that I'm a crazy man. But now, last year, David was there and he went to migrate from Australia to Asia, uh, to Nepal, to live. It's a beautiful place. Okay, We will be there. So let's uh, enjoy a uh, very uh, nice, uh, we hope you will try to learn a lot. Uh, I'm, going to plan. I'm asking this gentleman, join me. So my training will really start weeks. If you want to join with me, you can apply. <laughs> okay, and I'll do it. So that's a cause that we work in Kathmandu School of Law. That's a courage we made this institution, a very good institution with this world. I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. Professor Yuga, so I think you guys have got the hint of what uh, Professor David was talking last night about uh, Professor Nguna and, and we're going to get to hear a lot more from him about how KSL has grown up, how we have grown up the partnerships around the world, and how we have just completed our 20th year uh, of establishment. Mm. With this, I would now uh, request for introduction of uh, all the participants. So we will pass on the mic, and you will just introduce yourselves. Alice, um, I'm a fifth year undergraduate last year. Um, yeah, I'm Alice, I'm a fifth year undergraduate last year. and this is my second year. Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm a second year JD. Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm also a second year JD. Hi, I'm Tamina, and I'm a fifth year LLP. In my last year of uh, Master of Criminology. Hi, I'm Cassie, I'm in my third year of a JD. Hi, I'm Sandra, I'm in my second year of a JD. Namaste everyone, I'm Drea Patrai, a finalist student at Kathmandu School of Law. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Toby, also in the third year of my JD. Hi, I'm Fiona, I'm in my third year of my JD. Uh, hi, I'm Tanath, I'm also third year of JD. Very excited. Hi, I'm Katie, I'm studying Master of International Law. Namaste everyone. Uh, my name is Anu Sankare, a final student at Kathmandu School of Law. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm also a fifth year LLB. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm also a fifth year LLB. Hi, I'm Lucy. Also a fifth year LLB. Hi, I'm Yani. I've been sober for three years, <laughs> and I'm also a third year JD. Hi, I'm Nick, and I'm also a third year JD. Namaskar, everyone. I'm Lisa Odikari, a final year in Kathmandu School of Law.
Um, my name is Alice, and I'm uh, in a Master of Environmental Science and Law program. Hey, I'm, I'm Jerry. I'm a Master of Health Hi, I'm Kathy. Uh, this is why I find all subjects of the JD. Hi, I'm Miranda. Uh, I'm in my fourth year of LLB. Hi, I'm Janet. I'm in my fifth year of LLB. Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm also in my fifth year of undergrad. Hi, I'm Smart. I'm in my sixth year of LLB. Hi everyone, I'm Anne, I'm also in my sixth year of the LLB. Hi, I'm Peter, I'm in my seventh year of LLB. Hi, I'm Ted, I'm the second year JD. Hi, I'm Faisal, and I'm support staff from the Sydney University. I'm working as an assistant professor in Gatman Club. Uh, with this, I believe uh, we are at the end of the opening inauguration ceremony. Uh, we are going to have a class at 10 o'clock, so the tea is outside. Uh, you guys can enjoy, you can talk to Professor Ngulla for a while if you want to. And uh, we can meet back at 10 o'clock in the next room there. Thank you. Sorry, I just forgot. Can we take a group photo outside? Thank you. Mm -hmm.